Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the ninth lecture of open course on diffusion in multi-component solids. In this lecture, we will see how Gibbs free energy composition diagrams help in determining phase stability and phase diagrams. We will also see how the constraints are imposed on the degrees of freedom based on Gibbs phase rule. So, last class we went over uh, regular solution model and ideal solution models for uh, determining the Gibbs free energy of mixing that is the change in Gibbs free energy when we form a solution of two components. So, in general molar Gibbs free energy of mixing delta G m can be expressed as delta H m that is the enthalpy of mixing minus temperature times delta S m, delta S m is the entropy of mixing. For ideal solution, enthalpy of mixing is 0 and entropy of mixing, the entire contribution to it comes from the change in configurational entropy. So, delta G m is expressed as R T x a ln x a plus x b ln x b. And for regular solution, delta H m is given as omega x a x b and for regular solution, uh, this should be regular and for regular solution, we assume that the entropy of mixing is still only because of the change in configurational entropy and we assume random mixing. So, the entropy of mixing for regular solution is same as ideal entropy of mixing. But in reality, if delta H m is not 0, then uh, as I mentioned in the last class, there will be a tendency for short range order and whenever there is a short range order, the entropy of mixing will not be equal to the ideal uh, entropy of mixing because then the mix mixing is not random. right? So, in real solutions, the way the Gibbs free energy of mixing is model is that we define a quantity called molar excess Gibbs free energy. So, the molar excess Gibbs free energy G x x is nothing but difference in the uh, Gibbs free energy of mixing of a solution and its Gibbs free energy of mixing if the solution was ideal. So, G x s is delta G m minus delta g m i d. In what respect the real solution is different from ideal solution? First, it has a non-zero enthalpy of mixing and second, the mixing is not random. right? So, the g x s has two contribution. One is from the enthalpy of mixing and the second one is from the non-ideal part of entropy of mixing. Right. So, there are various models on which G x s can be modeled and then we can uh, also determine the model for the real solutions. We will not go in details of that. Now, we are interested in uh, understanding the stability of solutions. Right. So, if we draw this delta G m versus composition curve, if the enthalpy of mixing is non-zero, but has a very small magnitude. 
right then we, we have seen in the last class the Gibbs free energy of mixing will still be negative at all composition and if we draw the curve of delta g m versus composition expressed in terms of x b or mole fractions of b it will take a, a shape something like this. So, we are drawing delta g m versus x b. Now, I have drawn this curve to be symmetric right? because I am assuming constant value of omega, right? but this omega may change as a function of composition in which case the curve will not be symmetric. Okay, but for simplicity, uh, let us just work with the uh, symmetric curves of delta g m versus x b. So, now what does this mean that at any composition, if I form a solution consider x b prime, if I take two components with this composition x b prime and x a prime and form a solution there will be a decrease in Gibbs free energy and so the forming the solution will be an irreversible uh, reaction and we see that the solution will be stable at all composition. Now, this is delta g m versus x b what about the absolute Gibbs free energy of solution. So, if we draw absolute Gibbs free energy versus x b curve how would it look like g solution will be basically the total Gibbs free energy of the system before mixing plus the delta g m. Right? So, the total Gibbs free energy before mixing will be x a g a 0 plus x b g b 0 plus delta g m. So, if on left axis is a rich right axis is b rich and if I write x b as x axis then I will have g a 0 marked somewhere on x a equal to 1 axis this is basically the molar Gibbs free energy of pure a and g b 0 marked somewhere on the x b equal to 1 axis. So, I am showing here g b 0 greater than g a 0, but it can be other ways also. So, I am right now assuming g b 0 is greater than g a 0. So, before mixing the total Gibbs free energy of the system was x a g a 0 plus x b g b 0. So, before mixing the total Gibbs free energy varies along this straight line joining g a 0 and g b 0. Right? So, this is basically x a g a 0 plus x b g b 0 and at any given composition if you know delta g m then you know the absolute value of the Gibbs free energy right. So, if you plot at each composition we will get a curve something like this. So, this is the absolute Gibbs free energy versus mole fraction. So, this is how the G solution versus composition curve would look like. However, we do not know the absolute values of Gibbs free energies. right? So, by convention we assign value of 0 to some standard state of each component and usually the standard state uh, is taken as the pure element in its stable state at the uh, temperature being considered. Right? So, in this case g a 0 and g b 0 will assign value of 0 and if we do that then g solution becomes equal to delta g m. So, whether we draw delta g m curves or g solution curves they give us the same information. Okay. Uh, so, now once we have uh, established how the Gibbs free energy of solution varies with composition right. Our next uh, 
question is then how do we determine the individual chemical potentials from there any idea how do we go about it right so uh, tangential intercept method right so if we want to determine chemical potential mu a is basically same as a partial molar Gibbs free energy of A in the solution and it is defined as partial of Gibbs free energy of solution with respect to number of moles of A at constant temperature, pressure and constant number of moles of B. So, with molar Gibbs free energy of the solution is then written as G solution is equal to X A mu A plus X B mu B and from the Gibbs Duham equation we have X A D mu A plus X B D mu B equal to 0. Now, if we differentiate this equation and then use Gibbs Duham equation and do some rearrangement of the terms, we will get the equation for G A bar which can be written as G A bar is equal to G minus X B times D G by D X B. We can write the same equation in a little bit of different form. So, if we write it in terms of G equal to dG by dx B, x B plus G A bar. Right? This is an equation of a line. Right? We can it is in the form of y is equal to m x plus c, where m is the slope of the line and c is the intercept on y axis. So, here if you see this is the slope dg by dx b is the slope of g versus x b curve, right. So, if g is y and x b is x, we will see that this is an equation of the line. If we express uh, the equation for um, a partial molar Gibbs free energy of A in the form of y is equal to m x plus c it takes this form g versus x b and this is basically the equation of a line which is tangent to the Gibbs free energy curve at the desired composition. And g a bar in this is nothing but the intercept of this tangent on the x a equal to 1 axis. Right? So, if we want to determine the chemical potential of a at some composition x b we draw a tangent to the Gibbs free energy curve at that composition and the intercept on x a equal to 1 axis is basically g a bar which is same as mu a. Similarly, the intercept of the tangent on the x b equal to 1 axis gives us chemical potential of b mu b which is same as G B bar. Now, this method we can apply for determining any partial molar quantity. If we know the relationship between the actual molar quantity with the composition. So, for example, if we want to determine the partial molar volumes, we draw the curve of molar volume of the solution versus composition and by the tangential intercept method we can determine the partial molar volumes at the given compositions. Similarly, uh, we can also apply this method to delta G m curve. So, at any composition we can determine the partial molar Gibbs free energy of mixing of a component. So, at this composition if we need to determine the delta G m a bar we draw the tangent 
and at x a equal to 1 intercept this is delta g m a bar and it is nothing but g a bar minus g a 0. It is basically this quantity the difference between g a bar and g a 0. This was the case when the magnitude of enthalpy of mixing was very small. Now, what if the magnitude of enthalpy of mixing is high? So, delta H m may be highly negative or highly positive. So, let us first consider the case of delta H m greater than 0 with a large magnitude. So, we have seen when delta H m is greater than 0 and when it has a large magnitude delta g m curve will develop a negative curvature. Now, how do we assess the stability of solutions in this case? So, if we consider any composition towards uh, a reach or b reach side. So, suppose any composition towards a reach side here. So, we are drawing delta g m versus x b and if we consider composition x b 1 here and we see that delta g m is negative. So, the solution is stable single phase solid solution is stable in this case. What if I consider so suppose at higher temperature there may be a single phase solid solution uh, at this composition let us call this x b 2 and if I quench it to this temperature the temperature that I am considering here. So, initially there will be an metastable solid solution right, but then will it remain stable? Why? The Gibbs free energy delta g m is still negative. Right. So, what if the solution with this composition splits into two different compositions? obviously in order to keep mass balance one has to be a rich the other has to be b rich. So, suppose it splits into two compositions let us call this a prime and b prime. The total Gibbs free energy now is give is li lying along this line joining a prime and b prime and where it intersect this x b 2 line. We have seen by splitting into A prime and B prime there is a decrease in Gibbs free energy right. So, there is a tendency for this solution to split into two different solutions one with composition which is rich in A the other richer in B. Now, this can continue it can further split right instead of A prime B prime it can split into let us call this A double prime B double prime and there is a further decrease in Gibbs free energy. So, what will be the equilibrium compositions of A rich and B rich solutions? How long it can keep decreasing? If we analyze this, we will see that it will keep decreasing until we have A rich solution with composition A, B rich solution with composition B and this points A and B are basically the touching points of the double tangent to the curve double tangent is basically the common tangent to the both parts of the curve. Now, why not beyond A and B? If it splits further, we will see that there will be an increase in Gibbs free energy. Right? So, the equilibrium uh, uh, configuration will be two solid solutions one with composition A which is in equilibrium with another solid solution with composition B. 
So, any solution in between will split into two compositions. So, at temperature T, any composition between A and B will be stable as two phase solid solution, one with composition A, the other with composition B. So, up to A, we say solid solution 1 is stable, beyond B, the B rich solid solution, let us call it 2 is stable and between A and B, there is a two phase equilibrium, 1 plus 2. And you see this compositions are fixed for the two phase equilibrium. And why is that? It is also consistent with the Gibbs phase rule. Right? So, what does Gibbs phase rule says? f is equal to c plus 2 minus p, where f is the number of degrees of freedom, c is the number of components and p accounts for number of phases and 2 accounts for 2 variables temperature and pressure. Right? So, if we considering binary system, which we are considering here, c is equal to 2 and the number of phases here are 2 in the two phase equilibrium region. So, we basically have f is equal to 2 plus 2 minus 2. So, we have 2 degrees of freedom, but we have already consumed that. Why? Because we are drawing this curve remember at constant temperature and constant pressure. So, both T and P are constant. So, these 2 degrees of freedom are already utilized. So, in effect f is equal to 0. Okay. So, we cannot vary the composition. So, once we fix the overall composition that is it, the compositions of the two phases in equilibrium is fixed. Okay. Whereas, in the single phase region we will have one degree of freedom. Right. So, if you see there is a degree of freedom of composition. You can vary the composition and still be in the single phase region. Now, within this region, what happens if I have different compositions? So, as I change the overall composition, what will change? Because the composition of the two phases are fixed. Right. So, the relative amount of two phases will change. As the composition moves towards B rich side, the fraction of B rich phase that is B phase will increase and those phase fractions can be obtained by lever rule. Okay. So, now what happens if I change the temperature? I okay, will redraw this curve here. So, between points A and B there is no miscibility. So, it is called a miscibility gap, right? the miscibility gap region between A and B. If we plot temperature versus X B, we can plot these compositions A and B. So, let us say this is at temperature T 1. So, at T 1 we plot these two points A and B. As I increase the temperature, what should happen? 
see delta g m is equal to delta h m minus t delta s m. So, the entropy of mixing factor is multiplied by the factor of temperature, right. So, as I increase the temperature, a contribution from the entropy term is increasing, right. So, as, as I increase the temperature, the miscibility gap should decrease or increase. So, relative contribution from delta H m is decreasing, right. So, the region with negative curvature should decrease, right. So, as I increase the temperature, so if I draw the same curve at a higher higher temperature, it will be something like this. And if I determine again the equilibrium compositions by tangential intercept method, this will be say A prime B prime. So, at a little higher temperature, let us say at T 2, plot this. So, if I keep increasing the temperature at some point, this curvature negative curvature will vanish. Right? During the transition at somewhere at some temperature T 3, the curvature will become 0 at this point and that is called the critical point. So, at that point basically A prime and B prime are overlapping and if we draw this curve, this is basically the locus of A and B, we will get basically the phase diagram with miscibility gap. Right. There has to be a little curvature here. So, this is how we can obtain the phase diagram from Gibbs free energy mixing curves. This is an example of phase diagram with miscibility gap. At temperatures above this, there is no negative curvature because the contribution from T delta S term is very high, right. So, the negative curvature which was because main which was mainly because of the highly positive value of delta H m has vanished and so again the complete miscibility will exist at higher temperature. So, beyond the critical temperature, so this is the critical point, this is the critical temperature which in this case is T 3. And the miscibility will be there again, clear? Any doubt? Okay. So, so far we consider only one solid solution. What if there are more phases which are stable? So, for example, the simplest of such system is an isomorphous system. So, in isomorphous system, there is complete miscibility in the liquid solution as well as complete miscibility in the solid state. So, there is a complete liquid solution, complete solid solution and there is a two phase region in between liquid plus solid. So, there are two phases we need to consider liquid as well as solid. So, how do we get to this phase diagram from the Gibbs free energy of mixing curves? So, since there are two phases, we need one curve for each phase. So, we need one delta g m curve for solid solution, one delta g m curve for liquid solution, right. So, let us first draw the delta g m curve for liquid solution.
you can draw G solution curves, right. So, that, that way I can explain it in a better way. Uh, so, when we draw G solution curve for liquid, what we do? We take first pure A in liquid form at the temperature which is being considered and we take pure B in liquid form and mix them to form liquid solution. Now, let us select the temperature T, let us call it T 1 in between the melting points of the 2. So, T 1 is greater than the melting point of A and it is lesser than the melting point of B. So, on x i equal to 1 axis, I have to first look at G A 0, the molar Gibbs free energy of A, this is in liquid form, right. On x b equal to 1 axis, I look at G B 0, B in liquid form. And then, if we find out the Gibbs free energy of liquid solution, you can draw the curve which will be something like this. So, this curve is for liquid solution. Right? We do the same procedure for solid solution. We first take A in solid form, then B in solid form and then mix the two find out what is the change in Gibbs free energy. Now, G A 0 solid, where would it lie relative to G A 0 liquid? it will be above because at T 1 liquid A is a stable phase. So, solid A will have higher molar Gibbs free energy than liquid A. So, G A 0 solid will be greater than G A 0 liquid. What about G B 0 solid? T 1 is less than T M B. So, at T 1 pure B is stable as solid. So, G B 0 solid will be lesser than G B 0 liquid. And then we can draw a curve for solid solution, right. This is for solid solution. You see they are intersecting at some point and we can draw a common tangent to both of them. this is the tangent which is common to both the curves. Let us mark the touching point of the common tangent to liquid solution and solid solution as A and B. So, up to A we can see that if we vary the composition from x b equal to 0, up to A we will see that liquid solution has lower Gibbs free energy than solid solution. Right. So, liquid solution will be stable. Beyond composition B up to x b equal to 1, we see that solid solution has lower Gibbs free energy than liquid and so solid solution is stable. But between A and B what happens? Again, if we consider any composition in between, let us say x b prime, we see that if this composition splits into one so a liquid solution and one solid solution, it will be associated with a decrease in Gibbs free energy, right. So, at x b it looks like liquid solution has a lower Gibbs free energy than solid solution, one would tend to think that liquid solution is stable. But we also need to think about other possibilities by which will there be any further decrease in Gibbs free energy. And one such possibility is by splitting the same composition into liquid solution which is richer in A and a solid solution which is richer in B. And by doing this we can decrease the Gibbs free energy. And so, the one composition will split into liquid solution and solid solution and the equilibrium compositions can be marked by the common tangent to the two curve.
A and B. So, any composition between A and B, there is a two phase equilibrium liquid plus solid. And this A and B can be marked on this phase diagram here. So, if we increase the temperature, what should happen? So, will the two curves will shift up or down or one will shift up, one will shift down? Exactly, both the curves will shift down, why? You know this equation of state dg is equal to minus s dt plus v dp obviously plus sigma mu i d and i at constant composition. So, this will be 0. So, and at constant pressure dou g by dou t is equal to minus s. So, if you consider any composition, as I increase the temperature, the Gibbs free energy should decrease, because the slope is minus s. So, the slope is always negative, the Gibbs free energy should always decrease with temperature, but entropy of liquid is higher than entropy of solid. So, the liquid curve will shift down faster than the solid curve. Right. So, in a way it will look like relatively the liquid curve is shifting down relative to the solid curve. Right. So, if we try to draw that, we will see that the points A and B as I increase the temperature, they are shifting both A and B are shifting towards right and they are approaching each other, Right. similar to here. If I determine the comp equilibrium compositions of liquid and solid at a higher temperature T 2, this will be A prime and B prime and this will continue until T m B. Right. And beyond T m B, what will be the situation? Only liquid is stable. So, the solid curve will lie completely above the liquid curve. So, at all compositions, Gibbs free energy of liquid solution is lower than that of solid solution. So, we looked at uh, how to derive phase diagrams from Gibbs free energy of mixing versus composition curves for some simple systems, the one with uh, miscibility gap and also one with isomorphous phase diagram. So, now in both these cases, uh, solid A and solid B, both the components in solid states had the same crystal structure. What if they have different crystal structures? Then it will give rise to little more complicated phase diagrams. One example is the eutectic phase diagram, similar to what I have drawn here. So, this is a eutectic phase diagram between two components A and B. There is a little bit of terminal solid solubility alpha is the A rich solid solution, which let us say is B C C, beta is B rich solid solution, which let us say is F C C, right. And there is a eutectic point here, the three phase equilibrium between alpha, beta and liquid. So, how do we get to this from the Gibbs free energy versus composition phase diagram? So, in computational thermodynamics, essentially we evaluate the Gibbs free energy curves for different uh, uh, phases and then from this Gibbs free energy versus composition data, we derive the phase diagram. That is the actual way we go in computational thermodynamics, but to understand the process uh, really well, let us do it a reverse way. Right? So, at a given temperature on the phase diagram, let us see how the Gibbs free energy mixing curves will look like. So, let us start with the temperature T 1 here, where you have a two phase equilibrium alpha and beta. 
Now, there are three phases on the phase diagram. So, we need minimum three curves, one for BCC solid solution that is alpha, one for FCC solid solution that is beta and one for liquid solution. So, first we need the curve for alpha that is the BCC solid solution. So, we need to first mark G A 0 and A solid in BCC crystal structure and we need the point G B 0 and B also in FCC. Uh, B in BCC, sorry, we are drawing the BCC solid solution curve. So, B also has to be in BCC. So, note B is stable uh, as FCC, but we need the value of molar Gibbs energy of B in BCC. Right? So, we first need to convert FCC B into BCC B and then mix a in BCC and B in BCC to form the BCC solid solution. So, that will give us the curve for Gibbs energy of mixing curve for alpha. So, this is the curve for alpha, right. So, this basically practically it may not be possible to determine the Gibbs energy change associated with this transformation FCC B to BCC B, but we need to know that. So, that may be done by the first principle calculations. Right. Then we need the curve for beta. So, for beta which is FCC, we need G A 0 for FCC that is the molar Gibbs energy of A when it is FCC and obviously, A FCC is an unstable phase. So, the value of G A 0 FCC will be higher than G A 0 B C C. And B is stable as F C C. So, G B 0 F C C will be lesser than G B 0 B C C. Then we can get the curve for beta. Okay, this is for beta. Then we can determine the two phase region by drawing a common tangent and the stretching points A and B mark the equilibrium compositions of the two phases in equilibrium. So, if we see up to point A, there is a alpha stability beyond point B or beyond the composition B, beta single phase is stable because Gibbs energy of beta is lesser than that of alpha and between A and B there is a two phase equilibrium alpha plus beta. So, this A and B points on the phase diagram are really these two points A and B. As I increase the temperature these two points will approach each other. Right? So, we will see that the solubilities on both sides are increasing. Now, note here one thing, there is a common tangent right, at A and B. So, if I want to find out chemical potential of the two phases, chem chemical potential of A and B in the two phases at a, any composition between A and B, what would it be? You know any composition between A and B will be stable as two phase mixture, one with composition A, another with composition B. So, I need to know the chemical potential of A for example, in phase A and in phase B and it, it will be given by the tangent. So, trivially since there is a common tangent right mu A in A 
will be same as mu a in b. Similarly, mu b in a will be same as mu b in b and this is the condition for two phase equilibrium. So, the chemical potential of a in one phase should be equal to the chemical potential of a in the other phase. Similarly, chemical potential of b should be same in both the phases. What about the liquid solution curve? It will be lying above. So, liquid solution curve will be lying somewhere above. So, it has to be lying above this tangent line. As the temperature increases, the Gibbs free energy of liquid solution is decreasing faster than the solids, right. So, at one point you can imagine this the temperature will come when there may be a possibility that there will be a triple tangent, because this liquid curve relatively is shifting down. So, at some point it may touch the common tangent to both the solid solution, right. So, in that case, is a common tangent and the liquid is also touching so there is basically a three phase equilibrium because in this case chemical potential of a in alpha is same as chemical potential of a in beta same as chemical potential of a in liquid solution Similarly, mu b alpha is equal to mu b beta is equal to mu b liquid solution and this is basically the eutectic temperature right, because at eutectic temperature you see there is a three phase equilibrium here. So, if we mark this A, B and C, these are these two three points A, B and C is the what we call as eutectic point. So, in this case up to point A single phase alpha is stable right, beyond point B single phase beta is stable and between A and B there is a three phase equilibrium alpha plus beta plus liquid clear. Okay. So, this way you can assess other phase diagrams also more complicated ones. Now, let us look at one more case when delta H m is highly negative. So, what should happen when delta H m is highly negative? So, when delta H m was positive there is a tendency for phase separation, it developed a miscibility gap we seem right, because delta H m positive means A B bonds are weaker than A A and B B, average of A A and B B. That means, there is a tendency to minimize the number of A B bonds. So, there is a tendency for phase separation, but when delta H m is highly negative that means, A B bonds are much stronger than A A and B B, which means there will be a tendency to maximize the A B pairs number of A B pairs. Now, in extreme case what might happen? For example, if you are considering 50 50 percent of A and B when will be the number of A B pairs maximized? Simple, when all A atoms have only B as neighbors and all B atoms have only A as neighbor. So, this is an ordered structure 
and it may form a completely different phase which is called as intermetallic or intermediate phase right so when enthalpy of mixing is highly negative there will be a tendency for ordering and we may develop an intermediate phase let's consider such an example This is an example of a phase diagram with an intermediate phase. We may have A, B, and this is intermetallic AB. So, in that case, now we have three solid phases alpha, beta, and intermetallic AB. This will have a completely different crystal structure and then there is a liquid phase. So, we need at least 4 Gibbs free energy curve, one for alpha, one for beta and one for a b. And typically, the Gibbs free energy curve for this intermetallic will be very sharp. because delta H mixing is so highly negative that it develops such a sharp delta G mixing curve right? and then we can draw one curve for alpha, curve for beta and we can determine the two phase regions by the method of common tangent. So, up to point A, if you consider this temperature T1, T1 here, alpha is stable, beyond this, beta is stable. Now, we can draw two common tangents, one between alpha and AB, the other between beta and AB. So, between these two points, so this is basically point, let us call this P, this is C, this is D, this is A, B, C, D. C is the common tangent between alpha and B, uh, A, B touches the curve of A, B and D is the point where the common tangent between beta and A, B touches the curve A, B. And there is a small region between C and D where A B is stable, it is this small region. So, this phase region is basically alpha plus A B between D and B we have beta plus A B and between this small region there is a single phase A B which is stable. So, when delta H m is positive, there is a tendency for phase separation, delta H m when it is negative, there is a tendency for ordering, alright, any question? <coughs>